Hi and welcome to Single Track 101. Um, today I am doing a sort of a remake on a previous video. Um, it was how to buy your first real full suspension mountain bike. And this video is basically going to touch on some of those same things while expanding on a few other points. Um, now, one thing that I want to get clear is I do unsolicited reviews. I don't do, um, companies don't pay me to, to make videos. I make videos because I think they should be made. So um, I talk a lot about Giant and I'll talk a lot about Shimano and I'll talk a lot about Fox. Um, and I just want to make it clear, this is just because this is what I've liked and what I've found that has been good quality stuff. So, um, you know, if you are, you know, if you're cheering for another brand and I'm ticking you off, sorry. Um, I think it's more important to, you know, let new riders know what they should be looking for. But anyway, um, when you're looking for a new mountain bike, um, probably uh, one of the biggest considerations you want to look at is the rear suspension. Um, you know, mountain bikes, particularly rear, full suspension bikes, I'll, I'll tell you first off, full suspension is what allows me to be on the trail in the first place. Um, for me personally, I have nerve conditions and I really couldn't ride if it weren't for uh, a full suspension bike. Um, so the value I see on it is immense. Um, but more to the point, um, as a new rider, uh, what you want to look at is the design of the rear suspension. Now, um, this particular suspension, it's called Maestro. And it has, um, the technology is meant to counteract, counteract pedal bob. Now, this piece in here, uh, this is all a single triangle. It's, it's a single piece and it's got a dual pivot. It's got this pivot here and this pivot here. And this comes up, and, so the action is a little bit different. Most bikes just have one pivot here and the rest actuates like this. It's this design here, this linkage here, and this being solid, um, that's an important thing to look for. Now, is it the only thing to look for? No. Uh, it's, it's just kind of separates it. If this only has one link here instead of two links like this, um, it may be an older style technology that will tend to bob more. Now, what makes that important? Well, right here is a lockout for this shock, okay? This is a Fox shock, and it's got what's called Pro Pedal, but essentially it's a lockout. Now, what a lockout does is it stops the suspension from moving when you're pedaling. So, it pedals more like a hardtail and more uh, efficiently, right? Well, um, it started with uh, uh, DW Link, and DW Link um, kind of, they, they design a new way to measure suspension. And so what happened is a lot of other makers started making their own and uh, basically following that same uh, that same uh, perspective at looking at suspensions. And basically what happens is the, the chain tension counteracts the, the pedal bob. And so you get a stiff rear end. And that's a real important thing to look for when you're looking at a bike. And it's, is, is it dire? No, it's not dire. It's not like if you get a bike that's not a dual pivot design or or doesn't have some other you know, counteracting technology like uh, Niner has CVA, Yeti has Switch. There are all kinds of technologies out there that are meant to do it. Um, but having them is so much nicer than not. Okay, it's kind of like air conditioning for your car. You know, you get, uh, you know, it's like you buy this really nice car. It's got all the bells, bells and whistles, but no air conditioning kind of a bummer, you know? <laughs> so, uh, you know, and, and there are certain cases where air conditioning just isn't as important, you know, like a top field dragster. You know, you get into that kind of stuff, you know, like you get into eight inch travel, full suspension mountain bikes, you, you don't need, um, you know, something that counteracts pedal bob as much because it's designed for a specific purpose. But when you get a bike, like most people, you want something you can ride everywhere. And that includes some downhill, that includes some cross country. And I'll tell you, there's nothing quite as frustrating as, you know, getting to the top of a climb and then forgetting to flip that switch back and going down the hill and having it be rough and not as well performing. And you're just like, man, what happened? Oh, I left the switch on lockout. You know what I mean? It's, it's not the end of the world that you don't have a good suspension, but man, if you're going to buy a bike, 
you know, why not get a bike that's got the good suspension design in it so you can focus on the other parts. So that's my big thing on when you're buying a, a new mountain bike or, or your first mountain bike, really look at the rear suspension. Um, it does not have to be giant. It does not have to be, um, you know, uh, the, the bike manufacturers I'm mentioning specific. But I will say that um, suspension designs that are split pivot, um, they do counteract uh, brake jack, okay, and brake jack is a real important thing to counteract. Uh, it, what it does, what brake jack is, um, is when your suspension is locked up, you know, you're, it just, when you hit the brakes, your suspension just locks up. And so all the traction you have, because of it being a, a full suspension, goes away because of brake jack, okay? So you're, instead of being able to hit the brakes when you're going down a rough section, um, your rear tire just kind of skips over stuff, and that's a bad deal. Um, this suspension, in particular, uh, Maestro, does counteract brake jack and pedal bob, so it's a good suspension design. Um, and again, I am not saying that Giant is the be-all, end-all. Uh, it's certainly an, a nice bike. I haven't felt the need to change. This is a 2011. It's 2015. I'm still really happy with my bike, and I've gone on a lot of demo rides and tried a lot of different things out. Over and over, I keep going back to this bike thinking I'm just happy I have this bike. So um, so for me, it's not that I'm the authority on this. It's that I've been there and I've been real happy. I've seen other people go through bike after bike after bike trying to find the one that really makes them happy. Um, and, you know, the more important point to that is demo a bike. If you've got a bike that you think you want, I would say don't buy it until you can demo it. And certain places, um, they will let you demo a bike, and then, you know, if you buy it, they'll put that credit toward the bike, you know. So they say they'll charge a $60 to demo a bike. Well, if you go out and demo the bike and you don't like it, at least you're only out 60 bucks instead of, like, you know, 3000 So um, demo as much as you can because that's really going to give you a good idea of what you're looking for. Um, I demoed this bike uh, two different times before I bought it, so maybe I, that was overkill. But I also um, demoed it to try different sizes, okay? And that's the next point on buying full suspension, is that you want to size properly. This is something, again, you cannot change. Just like the rear suspension, you cannot change the size of your bike without buying another bike. Now. You know, if you have used to mark bikes, you know, bikes that you can get for $200, $200 that are full suspension, they typically only come in one size. But when you get a bike like this, um, a bike that's respectable, that um, has really good capabilities, they're going to be sized. This happens to be a large. I'm 5'11 and a half. This bike fits me quite well. Um, if you are in a situation where you don't know what size you need to be, um, you need to listen to... Uh, the bike shop and kind of pay attention to what they're suggesting. Um, when you get a smaller bike, uh, a bike that's too small, uh, your bike, you'll never be able to get a correct bike fit. Um, and that gets into a whole other can of worms. But bike fit is really important. If a bike is too small for you, it may feel whippy and snappy and move around on you and, and it's real whippable, you know, it's real light under you. Um, but, you know, I, <laughs> I've seen it happen. Uh, you get that real small bike and then, you know, you try and adjust it for yourself. It just doesn't quite fit because you got the wrong size bike and that's, that's a bummer of a situation. So really check the sizing for yourself. Um, and like this particular bike, when I tried it, um, I had a hard time picking up the front wheel because it, it, I was like, man, it just doesn't pick up as easily as uh, the medium does. Well, what I did for that is I went and got a shorter stem and, uh, and wider bars, and it really made a big difference, and um, that's another video I'll carry over from before. But um, anyway, your, the size of your bike is really important. You don't want to get too small of a bike. It, it, you'll regret it. Um, you know, maybe there are some people that really like riding a size smaller. Um, I'm saying it's better to, you know, shorten the components a little bit, like your neck and, and things like that, rather than be on too small of a bike. So, anyway, that's my other uh, recommendation. Um, you know, as far as 
buying bikes and, and you know, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about, about uh, Giant. Um, they have a, a lifetime warranty on the frame and um, I did actually use that. Um, I cracked the frame. Uh, when these first came out, uh, they didn't have a real big weld here. Um, the weld was kind of small and mine ended up cracking right there. Um, John was really cool. They, I mean, they sent out a replacement frame and uh, I was, my back, bike was back together in less than two weeks. Um, I know there's a lot of other manufacturers that are not as good about that. So that's, that's another uh, reason, you know, you might want to check Giant out. But again, the point of this video was not that Giant is better than any other. They are a really good brand. They are the largest bike manufacturer in the world. They make a lot of frames for other bike manufacturers. So that, I mean, they've got a lot of good points. And the other thing is their bikes are um, usually uh, the most economical for what you get. Um, so yeah, I, I really like Giant. Um, I'd probably buy another Giant if I was buying a bike today. So for me, that's kind of why I made this video is I've had a success story. Um, I had a good time with my new mountain bike purchase rather than being bummed and looking for the next thing. So take that out in the world with you um, when you're looking around. Um, there are certainly some good brands. Um, you know, brands I like are, uh, well, of course, Giant. I like Niner. I like Yeti. Um, you know, Santa Cruz is a good one. Um, but really, you know, look at your rear suspensions. Your rear suspensions should be the major focus of a, of a full suspension bike. If you've got something that is not uh, a good design, it's, it's a bummer because you end up getting stuck with that. And I will say one more thing um, to uh, kind of clarify that I'm not all about Giant. Um, Giant makes a stance and um, it is a really inexpensive bike. It's 120 millimeters uh, of travel on a 27.5 wheel and it is a good uh, it's a good bike however it has a split pivot design and the split pivot design does not counteract pedal bob so you have to use the switch on that one okay so I am not blindly saying go out and just buy anything that has giant on it okay um, I am saying if you're going to buy the, the stance I think it'd be better to get the trance or the Anthem 29 um, you know depending on what you're looking for um, and that goes into another thing which is suspension travel um, but really the point is the rear suspension should be your main concern on a full suspension bike um, because if you got that stance, um, I, I've been talking to a guy that did get one, and uh, you know, he, it's a great bike. It's it's it you know goes down the hills nicely. It does everything nicely. You just gotta flip the switch every day, you know, every time you go up a climb, and it gets you know it's kind of a pain. Um, and you know what he said is, yeah, I would have rather have gotten the, the trance to start with because um, he made a lot of nice upgrades to his bike. So. If you start with a better base, you know, your, your frame and your rear suspension, that's kind of unchangeable, but you can change everything else. So if you do have to get something more economical, um, you know, maybe you can go with something that doesn't have, um, you know, uh, Fox shocks and, and, and fork. And again, I, I reference Fox uh, because their, their basics are really high end to begin with. They don't have, you know, an entry level. I mean, they do this is all entry level stuff, but it's really good. Um, so there isn't, you know, you don't have a crappy Fox shock, so to speak. Um, so anyway, those are my basic pointers. I know these videos are long, but there's a lot that I've covered here. Um, and one more thing that I will cover is wheel size. Um, and I'll go more in depth on that, um, on another video, but, um, I really like 29. This is my personal thing. Um, for me, ride quality, how smooth the ride is, is paramount. It's everything for me. So um, I've ridden the 27.5. I like it. It's not as smooth as I need it to be personally. Um, so if you're older or you have nerve issues or you have some sort of pain or, or maybe you're not that good of a rider, um, you're not that sure on a bike, a 29er would be the way to go because a 29er is much more forgiving. There's a lot more traction. It's a lot more stable of a bike. If you want a bike that's good for getting up in the air and jumping around and just kicking that thing around, 
maybe a 27.5 or maybe even a 26 if you can find one. Um, but between a 27.5 and a 26, I'd definitely go 27.5. Again, that's me being oriented to the 29ers, so take it for what's worth. But, um, you know, as far as which, you know, should you get a 29 versus 27.5, they've said, oh, 27.5 is going to be the dominant wheel. Maybe. Um, I'm always going to like my 29. So, but uh, anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching. And if you watch this long, thank you. Um, please subscribe. I'll put up more videos like this, hopefully videos that are informative, helpful, um, things that touch on mountain biking that um, just give you a little bit of insight from someone that's been in it a while. Again, I'm not the be-all, end-all. Um, I'm just another point of view on YouTube. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and uh, have fun out there. Thanks.